the little voice in my head. And I like to call it the little bitch. What do you want in your life? Like this is such a simple question, but majority of people who I talk to have no idea what they want in their life. Because life, success, happiness, joy, peace, all of those things, they're not difficult. We make them difficult. We're gonna be talking about the mindset problems that you have and that little tiny voice that holds you back from everything that you want in this world. And one of the things that I notice with people is that they think because of the fact that I am the, the mindset mentor, the mindset guru, or whatever it is they wanna call me, that I have no issues with my mindset and nothing can be further from the truth. And I'm gonna be talking about that today. One of the things that you realize is everything that I teach I'm a guinea pig first. I don't ever teach anything until I know that it works for me. And the reason why this is important is because you have to realize with most people who are coaches, they're coaches because they really struggled at something. So much they struggled at it that they end up going, I, I have this issue and I need to really, really work at this issue. And they work hard and they work hard and they work hard and they overcome whatever that thing is, whether it's weight loss, whether it's yoga, or in my case, it's mindset, where I had such a bad mindset, I was so negative, I made so many excuses for why my life wasn't where I wanted it to, until I identified this problem and said, this is the main thing holding me back in my life. I'm gonna go full force at destroying this thing that's inside of my head so that I can get past it. And so I worked at it for years and years and years and a decade, and now 14 years I've been working at it. And now I can go and teach people some of the stuff that it's worked for me. And that's what a coach really does. And that's what I'm teaching to you guys. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that the person who's a fitness coach doesn't also really want a hamburger every once in a while or doesn't want to work out every single day. It doesn't mean the person that's the yoga coach and the meditation coach is this perfect, calm, peaceful joy all of the time. What it all means is that it's something that they have to overcome and they work at it really, really hard. My mindset can be completely in the dump sometimes, but now I have the strategies to pull myself out of feeling that way because I've been working at it for so long, so I don't have to feel that way anymore. And that's what I'm going to talk about, is that I don't ever want to be seen as a guru. I don't ever want to be seen as this perfect person. The thing that I try to have people understand who listen to this podcast is I'm just a normal person that has all of the exact same struggles as you. I've just been working at it for maybe a few years longer than you have, and now I'm gonna teach you some of the strategies that worked for me. One of the best compliments that I ever got from somebody was inside of my Kaizen Mastermind, which is my 12-month program. And he said, the thing I like about you, Rob, is that you're just really ordinary. And most people would listen to that and be like, uh, that's kind of offensive. But for me, I was like, I love that because I don't want to think, have people think, that life is out of my reach. And I talked about this on my, on my Instagram stories um, a few days ago. So if you don't follow my Instagram, follow me on there, like I said earlier when we first started, because I talk about these things on my Instagram stories as well. And I talked about the little voice in my head. And I like to call it the little bitch. For me personally, it's my little bitch. It's the bitch inside of my head that holds me back from everything that I want. I'm talking about the voice inside of your head that is the opposite of what you truly want in your life. It's the voice that holds you back from everything that you've ever wanted. It's the one that stops you from taking the action that you need to. It's the one that's negative, when in reality you wanna be positive. It's the one that judges other people. It's the one that makes up stories and all of these demons that you think could be in your future and talks you into reasons why you should stay inside of your comfort zone. That's the little voice, that's the little inner bitch that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about something that happened with me today with my inner bitch so that you guys can understand that I go through these things, but then I can also tell you the process that I went through. So let me tell you. So we were in Sedona for the past month and we drove home from Sedona this Saturday and this Sunday. And uh, you know, we had to pack up all of our stuff. We were there for a month. And so we drive my truck out there so we can have my truck and I have a Ford Raptor so we go off-roading and do all of those things. So I wanted to have my truck out there. So we drive out to Sedona. So then we have to pack up the entire house. We have to clean up the house. We have to get all those things right. So that takes time, especially when I'm still working a full-time job while I'm there. So Thursday, Friday, we're working and packing, getting it together, getting all of our stuff together, saying goodbye to our friends, going on a hike with our friends so we can make sure that we say goodbye to everybody and say goodbye to Sedona. Saturday, nine hours of driving. Sunday, nine hours of driving. Monday, Monday, 
which was for me yesterday, it was just a whole lot of catching up, things that I had to do. And I just wasn't feeling it yesterday, but I had so many things I had to do. I just had to fight through it and just get things done. So then today, I'm not feeling it again today. And I wake up and I'm like, I don't normally not feel it. And I don't, when I don't feel it, I still do what needs to be done, but I don't normally go from one day of not feeling it to another day of not feeling it. I'm like, man, I'm off. I don't know if it's because of the fact I'm coming from Sedona, which is this beautiful, magical place. And now I'm coming here where there's tens of thousands of people and you know, hundreds of thousands of people and it's more dense and the energy might be more dense. Maybe there's more 5G. I don't know what it is. I'm just not feeling it. I feel different. And my inner bitch was really loud today. It was really loud yesterday, but it was really loud again today. And I was like, I'm not going to do this. This is not happening, inner bitch. We're not gonna do this. Now, if this was 10, 15 years ago, that little inner bitch would have just paralyzed me. It would have told me to take today off. It would have told me to go onto Instagram. You don't feel good. Not a great day. Maybe tomorrow, put off all of your goals to another day, procrastinate, whatever it is that it wants to tell me, it would tell me. But today it was telling me, oh yeah, don't, don't, you don't need to get your work done. You know, it's telling me to take the day off. It was telling me to take a step back. Ah, oh, just chill out today. You know, your, your business will be fine. You'll be fine. Life will be fine. You know, don't record your podcast. Don't do all the things that you need to do. And it was trying to hold me back from taking another step forward in my journey, in my personal development, in my life, in everything that I have. Now, I want to pause right there and I want to ask you guys a question. Do you know what I'm talking about, this inner voice? Do you feel this little inner bitch that comes in as well? Because for me, it's still loud. I've just developed strategies to not listen to it and not pay attention to it anymore. So what I did was I took a step back and I looked at it and I tried to take myself out of the jar so I could read the label and see what's actually going on here, right? So then I took a step back and I asked myself, what is my little inner bitch saying? Because usually what it's telling you not to do is what you actually need to do. So if I take a step back, it actually is a really, it puts a spotlight on what I actually need to do. It's showing me what I need to do. So I was like, what is my little inner bitch telling me? Okay, I can tell what it's saying. My little inner bitch is really, really trying to talk me out of working out today. Oh, do, do you know, work out later, Rob. Don't worry about doing it in the morning like you were supposed to. Oh, you didn't get enough sleep. Um, you didn't get enough, you know, coffee, tea. You don't feel 100% right. You don't wanna, you know, throw up and feel bad during your workout. So it was, I could tell it was this little story about why I shouldn't work out. I was like, I gotta drop everything now and work out. Cause when that little voice pops in and tells me what not to do, I need to do exactly what it's telling me not to do in order to conquer it. Because that's the thing that's holding me back from who I need to be is that little inner voice. I was like, all right, here we go. Rob, time to work out. Now we gotta go work out. So stopped what I was doing, moved some of the furniture inside the living room, got myself ready, found the YouTube that I needed to, got the weights, got everything that I needed to, got all set up. And the whole time I'm setting up, the little inner bitch is like, nah, man, why don't you do yoga instead? You know, do some yoga, take it easy. You know, you drove for two whole days, your joints are probably sore. You guys know what I'm talking about, just all of these excuses and things not to do and excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh uh, yeah, you know, and, and as I'm getting dressed and changing into my workout clothes, it got louder and louder. Rob, you don't have enough time. Rob, you literally just ate breakfast 15 minutes ago. What if you throw up all over your brand new couch? You know, all of these things came up into my head. Do yoga instead, all of this, and, and it's excuse, excuse, and trying to take me out of the thing that I need to do. And when I, when I can identify that voice and what it's saying, I need to go at what that little inner bitch is saying. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's work out, bro. We're gonna go at it. So we go at it, we start working out. During the workout, the voice is coming through. Uh, you're supposed to be working out for 45 minutes. Man, why don't you just cut it at 20? Like you just did the warm up. you just did a little bit of a workout, your joints are sore, you had a long drive, there's all of these things. You've got stuff you've gotta do today. You've got a Zoom call that you gotta jump on with the people that you're coaching, the people that you're teaching to build businesses with. You've also got a Zoom call that you gotta hop on for this course about how to rewire your brain. You've gotta record a podcast. You've gotta get on the phone with your sales team and help them. And it was just things that I had to do and had to do and had to do. And I was like, I'm not listening. I'm going to do what you don't want me to do. So finish the workout. Guess what? Felt a hundred times better after the workout. I was like, yes, I am conquering this little inner bitch day by day, day by day by day by day. I'm just doing what it's telling me not to do. So I'm like, all right, cool. 
got to do a Zoom in about 40 minutes. I'm going to go take a shower real quick. Hop in the shower. I start thinking about this podcast episode when I'm in the shower. And I'm like, yeah, it's like this little inner bitch. It keeps popping up. And I'm starting to think of ideas. And I'm mentally jotting down notes. And I'm like, basically what I did was I identified that the voice was going on. I identified that first. Then I asked myself, what does this little inner bitch not want me to do? And it was work out. And that's what I did. And then I went, hold on. What does the little inner bitch not want me to do right now? And immediately a thought came in, dude, the last thing you want to do right now is take a cold shower. You don't have time for a cold shower. And I was like, this mother is coming in again. He's coming in hot. I don't want this little inner bitch to be popping up inside of my head. I don't want it to be holding me back. Here it is again. It's popping up. All right. That means I got to take a cold shower. Time for a cold shower, Rob. All right, cool. So turn it into a cold shower. I'm doing my breathing exercise. <sighs> Going through the breathing exercise, doing everything that I'm supposed to, and it's popping up again. Okay, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. You've gone long enough. I'm like, that's not enough because I can hear the little voice coming up inside of my head. Uh, it's telling me that I'm needing to, to stop. I'm going to keep going instead. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. I'm going down. And what I'm doing is I'm breathing and actually like, if you could see me, if you're watching the video of this, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see it. But if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see it. For those of you guys that listen to the podcast, follow me on YouTube so you can see it. So I'm punching the air. I'm doing my breathing. And I was like, oh, I literally had like an out of body experience. So I'm basically looking at myself and thinking, how ridiculous do I look right now that I'm breathing really intensely. I'm punching the air and I'm having like a miniature fight between myself and myself inside of the shower in freezing cold water. And I was like, this is like a little inner bitch exorcism. Just the same way an exorcism is like pulling a demon out of a human. If you've ever seen the movie, The Exorcist, I'm basically pulling this demon out of my body where I'm like, I will not have you anymore. I'm going to conquer this side of myself. And I was like, I was fighting with myself and fighting with myself and fighting with myself. And eventually I was like, yes, I feel like I've conquered it. I feel like I've gotten past it. So then I get out of the shower and I'm like, okay, I feel good. I feel like I've conquered this thing. And I thought to myself, how often does that voice hold my listeners back? And I want you to think about that. How often does that little inner voice come up for you? And here's the thing, I've been working on myself for 14 years. I've taught thousands of people strategies that I've used over the years, and it still pops up. And I have a lot of friends that are successful people. Guess what? When I talk to them, the voice still pops up. It doesn't ever go away. You just learn how to do what it doesn't want you to do. I've said it before, the difference between a successful person and unsuccessful person is that they both feel the fears. They both have the little inner voice. They both have all of the fear of rejection, the fear of success, the fear of failure, all of those things. They just, the only difference between the two is that a successful person just doesn't listen to the little voice inside of their head. It just doesn't listen. They just don't listen to the fears, to all of the things that it says that they shouldn't do. They think that it's actually them, when in reality, it's a part of them that's trying to hold himself back. The unsuccessful person, this person that's not where they want to be in life, is the person who's sitting there and they're listening to that voice. Same voice. The only difference is that the people that aren't where they want to be are listening to that voice, and the people who are where they want to be are not allowing that voice to hold them back. They're so focused on their life. They're so focused on what they want. They're so focused on the lives that they're going to impact, the world they're going to impact, the money they make, the happiness, the peace, the joy, the family that they're going to build, the places they're going to travel to. They're so focused on that, that that little voice is just like a little gnome to them. They're like, oh, there's that little guy. Cute. Nice try today, but I'm not going to listen to you. Oh, I'm not going to listen to you, cute little guy. Uh, I'm going to put you over there in the corner. An unsuccessful person is like, oh my God, there's the monster. There's the boogeyman again. I need to listen to this boogeyman because clearly it's listening to my safety and I want to make sure that I, I stay away from it. No, the difference is the perception of the voice that you have. The successful person and the unsuccessful person both have that voice. The only difference is the unsuccessful person listens to it and the successful person doesn't listen to it and they actively fight against it. It's the exorcism that I'm telling you about. I know the voice is there. It's not going away and it hasn't gotten any quieter in the past 14 years. I'm gonna promise you that. 
I've just developed strategies to not allow myself to listen to it and to fight through and work through it. When I got out of the shower, I was freaking motivated. I did the, I felt proud of myself. I felt accomplished and that gave me momentum into the rest of the day. I crushed today and I did not feel like crushing today, but I did what the voice didn't want me to do. I did the full workout, felt better. Did the cold shower, felt better. I wouldn't have had a great day if I would have listened to the voice. So I want to ask you a couple questions. Number one, what is your inner bitch telling you? What is it telling you to do? Because usually what you should do is what it's telling you not to. So first off, what's it telling you? Number two, what is it holding you back from? What is that little inner voice holding you back from? Number three, what does it not want you to do? So number one, what is the inner bitch telling you? Number two, what is it holding you back from? And number three, what does it not want you to do? Because that is the key to your next level. Doing what that little inner voice doesn't want you to do is the key to the next level. You need to listen to it and go, huh, I've identified the little inner voice. I've identified what it doesn't want me to do. And now I need to do what it doesn't want me to do because that's actually the identification of what's going to get me out of the comfort zone. That is the key to unlock the door for the life that you want. That is the key to unlock the door for everything that you've ever wanted. Why? Because the little inner voice is the small reptilian part of your brain that's trying to keep you in a comfort zone to keep you safe. And everything that you want in your life is outside of that comfort zone. So if you listen to the voice and pay attention to what it says, and then you identify what it doesn't want you to do, and you do it anyways, it will automatically pull you outside of your comfort zone. And when you're outside of your comfort zone, you start creating the life that you want to. And I'm going to give you one of my secrets that I teach my highest paying clients of how to be more motivated and how to be more driven, which in turn will then make sure that you are less lazy. And one of the biggest questions that I get on my Facebook, on my Instagram, I get so many messages on Instagram from people, is how can I be more motivated? There's so many people that are out there in the world right now that just feel demotivated with all of the heaviness in the world, all of the things that are going on, all of the uncertainty. So many people are just so curious, how can I be more motivated? Because I don't feel that motivated. And the, the, the really important part of that is the feeling motivated. And we're just going to dive in. I want you to remember this quote for the rest of your life. Let action and routine drive your life, not emotion, right? When you don't feel motivated, it's because that's a feeling. That's an emotion. So let action and routine drive your life, not emotion. Now I'm not saying that emotions are bad. I think emotions are amazing things. But what I'm saying is don't let your emotion run your life. Let action and routine drive your life, not emotion. So one of the reasons why I find that so many people are not motivated and they're not driven towards the life that they want is because they have no plan and they have no intention. They don't know where they're going. And when you don't know where you're going, you don't know what you need to do to get there. And it's hard to take the right action when you don't even know where the hell you're trying to go. So it's very simple if you think about it. You know, if you don't know where you're, if you're not motivated, you don't feel driven and you don't have a plan, you don't have an intention, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what you need to do to get there, then it's hard to take the right action to go that direction, right? Most people, hopefully not you, wake up and when they wake up, they have very little vision for what their life is going to be. They have very little vision for what direction they're going into. They have very little plans for exactly what they're going to do. And they try to figure it out as the day goes by. And then they feel like the whole day they're just in reaction mode and reaction mode and reaction mode. And they're just putting out fires. Have you ever felt that way before? You just kind of see what happens. It's like getting into your car every single morning, not knowing where you're going to go and just driving around and taking random turns and then getting pissed off that at the end of the day, you're not, your car, you and your car are not where you want it to be when you don't even know where you want it to be in the first place. You just woke up and you're like, I'm gonna just drive and just turn left here and I'm gonna turn left here, I'm gonna turn right here. Well, no sh you're not where you wanna be because you had no vision as to where you're going. You had no plan as to where you're going. You had no intention, you literally had nothing. What makes you think that driving your car with no direction is any different than waking up in the morning and having no direction? It's the exact same thing. But of course you want where you want to be because you don't even know 
where you want to be. The example I always give that tends to make sense for people, it's like your mom calls you up and it's November. She's like, hey honey, I'm gonna buy some Christmas gifts. What do you want for Christmas? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Just, you know, give me whatever. She's like, are you sure? Yeah, no, I don't, I'm, just whatever, give me something. I'm like, okay, cool. And then on Christmas, you open the gift for your mom and you look at it and you're like, what the hell mom, this isn't what I wanted. Like, how could you get mad at your mom for not giving the gift that you wanted when she asked you what you wanted and you didn't tell her? That's how a lot of people are living their lives. I don't like where my life is. Well, what's your vision? I don't know. It's the exact same thing as not asking for the gift that you want. You've got to figure out what it is that you want to start working for. And so here are the five things that you have to have in order to create the life that you want and to stop being so lazy and to be more motivated. The first thing is vision. The second thing is schedule. The third thing is intention. The fourth thing is action. And the fifth thing is routine. We're going to go through each one of these. So the first one, vision. What do you want in your life? Like this is such a simple question, but majority of people who I talk to have no idea what they want in their life. Where the hell are you going? What do you want? What do you want your life to look like? Where do you want to be? Let me ask you a very simple question. Where do you want to be in 12 months? Where do you want to be? What do you want to look like? What do you want your body to look like? How much money do you want to have in your bank account? Where do you want to be in your career? Where do you want to be in your schooling? Where do you want to be in 12 months? It's a very simple question, but have you actually sat down with a pen and paper and written down everything that you want to accomplish and everything that you want to achieve and everything that you want to have over the next 12 months? If you haven't, then you're just driving blindly through life and not actually going anywhere. So where do you want to be in 12 months? I got another question for you. Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be? You're going to be somewhere. Where do you want that to be? Because I promise you, if you don't make a decision on where you want to be right now, you're just driving your car around and you don't even know where it's going. You're just like, all right, car, let's see where we're going. We're going to take some lefts. We're going to take some rights and maybe we'll end up at a mansion. Maybe we'll just end up at a shack. I don't know where we'll, we'll end up. Figure it out. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be in 10 years? If you don't know, then you'll never get the life that you want. You have to know what you want in order to go and work for it. You'll never hit a target that you cannot see. So what do you want? I feel like I'm, I feel like it's the notebook. What do you want? I don't know. It's not that easy. Yes, it is. Just freaking figure out what it is. What do, we, what do you want? I don't know. Yes, write it down. What the hell do you want in your life? Figure it out. Okay, that's the first thing. Vision. Now that we've got a vision, we've written down what we want. <clears throat> now we got to make a schedule. One of the biggest excuses, which is complete BS, that I hear from so many people, so many people, is I don't have enough time, okay? I don't have, oh, Rob, I, I, I wanna become a millionaire and I wanna run this successful business and I wanna make money and make a massive impact in the world, but I don't have enough time. Really, you don't have enough time? Poor you. Maybe one day you'll be blessed with more than 24 hours in the day, right? No, you have enough time. It's just that 99% of people are absolutely terrible at scheduling their time. I was running a, a meeting for some of my higher level coaching clients, all business owners. And I was saying, who here, we're on a Zoom call, I said, who here has said in the past month, I don't have enough time or thought that you don't have enough time? Raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. I said, all right, keep your hand up. If you would be really nervous, if I said, you need to show me your schedule for the week right now and everybody's hands stayed up. And I said, why is that? It's not because you don't have enough time. It's because you're absolutely terrible at scheduling your time. It's not that you don't have enough time. It's just that you're terrible with time management. And that's the truth. Most people are terrible with time management. And that's something that's good. Do you want to know why it's good? Because it's a skill set. You can always develop a skill set. You're not just talented. At the, at, there's no talent there. It's just a skill set. So you've got to get better at managing your time, right? Every single person has 24 hours in the day no more. You'll never be given anymore. So either you get it done or you don't. And it's that simple. Either you make excuses or you figure it out. You make excuses or you find a way. That's it. You make excuses or you find a way. You get the life that you want to or you don't. There is nothing in between. And then some people are like, well, Rob, but I want to start this successful business, but I've got a full-time job. Okay. Has there ever been another person in the history of mankind that has started a successful business, but had a full-time job? There has? Okay. Well, then clearly it's possible someone else has done it. Why aren't you doing it? 
Oh, Rob, but I also have children. Okay, has there ever been somebody in the history of mankind who's ever started a successful, successful business with a full-time job and with children? There is? Okay, then what's the difference? If they can do it, you can do it as well. So what you start doing, you start realizing that what you're doing is you're externalizing all of your excuses. It's, it, I don't have enough time, that's outside of me. I've got a full-time job, that's outside of me. I've got kids, that's outside of me. You need to take all of your blame and all of your responsibility and stop putting it on something else and start putting it on yourself. Figure it out because you're not gonna get more time. So the one thing that I always tell people, I got from Gary Vaynerchuk, not a long, you know, probably about five years ago. He says, stop saying you don't have enough time and just start saying it's not a priority for me and see if that switches your mindset on something. Don't say I don't have enough time. You've got enough time. You could find time. But the difference is you just haven't found the time. You haven't scheduled it correctly. I'm not saying take time away from your children and never see them to build your business. What I'm saying is get better at scheduling your time. Once the kids go to bed, do you have a couple hours you can build your business? Do you have the weekends? What can you do to make sure that you're building the life that you want to? Okay, that's the schedule side of it. Number three is your intention. Do you wake up every single day with intention? with a plan for the day. What you're going to do, how you're going to feel, what you're going to accomplish, what would make today an absolute success, or are you just driving that car around and you're just taking some random turns and you're seeing what happens, right? What is your intention every single day? One of the biggest things that I find that holds people back is that they're not intentional with their life. They're not intentional with their day. And they're just, as I've been saying, in reaction mode. You have to have intention. How do I wanna show up today? What would make today an absolute success? How can I impact someone else? How can I make sure that I bring $500 into my business today, $1,000 into my business today? I'm gonna to set an intention because it's kind of like just going, all right, I'm gonna be throwing darts anyways. I might as well try to find the bullseye. I'm gonna hit that bullseye. What would the bullseye for today look like for you? Sit down with a pen and paper. Ask yourself those questions, figure it out. Sit down and be more intentional with every single day that you have. So you've got to have intention. So now that we have, what do we have so far before we go a little bit further? Number one, we have a vision. We know where we're going. Number two, we have a schedule. We at least know what we're supposed to do. Number three, we have intention. We know what we want to accomplish for the day. We know how we want to show up. We know how we want to be. We know how we want to act. Okay, what do we need to do now? Speaking of act, number four is action. You've got to freaking do it. You've got to get your body moving. Emotion follows the body. Let me say that again so it gets really deep in every single person's head. Your emotions follow your body. When you don't feel good, I guarantee 95% of the time, it's because you've been lounging around not doing anything today. It's because you've been spending the past 45 minutes on Instagram. It's because you're not doing what you need to do. Your body will adapt to the... Our bodies are the most incredible machines on the entire planet. There is nothing more incredible than our bodies. <clears throat> but when you just let your body do what it's going to do, it's it's not as good as it could be. When you take control of it and you say, okay, you know, I've been, I don't, I don't feel really good. I don't really feel motivated today. Usually when you don't feel good, you don't feel motivated. You're usually, if I'm being 100% honest, you've been spending the past 30 minutes on Instagram, staring at your phone, watching TV, watching the news, and just allowing your body, your brain, everything, your emotions to be taken by something outside of you, right? When you don't feel good, get your body moving. Your body has this incredible adapting mechanism that once you start moving, once you start going and you feel like you're moving in the right direction, you get more excited, your body releases dopamine, and then it actually gives you more motivation. Dopamine is the, the motivation chemical inside of your brain. I'll give you a perfect example today. I worked out really hard yesterday. I worked out really hard today, the day before. And then my girlfriend, Lauren, was like, do you wanna work out today? I was like, ah, not really. Like, I feel like I need a little bit of a recovery day, but I'll come out and I'll work outside. So I made a, a plan for her to work out. And I was like, I'm gonna do some movements with you just to kind of get my body moving and to kind of, you know, get the lactic acid out of my body. Turn on some music, crank it, and I get about 10 minutes into moving and I went from not wanting to do anything to 10 minutes into moving, I'm like, I'm gonna finish this workout with you, right? Because my body adapted to the circumstances. And because I was starting to move and I felt better about the movement, what happened? Then my, I started to get dopamine release and the dopamine goes, hey Rob, keep going. This is good. And I was like, this is pretty good. Dopamine gets released when a person feels like they're going into the direction that they want to. So when I'm looking at myself in the, the window, and I'm like, I'm actually starting to look pretty good. I wasn't motivated today. Now I'm motivated. 
my body releases, my brain releases dopamine, and then it gives me more vo motivation to keep working. So action is absolutely required. Get some action moving. Emotion follows the body. Get the body moving. Just get started, whatever you have to do. If you want to work out today, but you really don't feel like working out today, what do you have to do? You have to just start moving in that direction. Okay. Action turns into what? When you do action over and over and over and over again, what does it turn into? It turns into a routine. Do you have a set routine for your life? Do you have certain things that you have to do every single day? Do you have a morning routine? Do you have an evening routine? Do you have consistent daily action? Because consistent daily action creates routines for you and routines drive your life. So many people that I've found, they feel like routines are very restrictive. So do you feel like routines are restrictive where you're like, oh, I want more freedom? Have you ever felt that way? What's interesting is that once you get really routined, you realize that all of your freedom is within that routine. All of your freedom comes from that routine. And you go, oh, when I know what I'm gonna be doing every single morning, I just have to show up and then I can, I can be free in that routine. Not just like wake up and have no intention, I wake up, I know what I'm doing, I know where I'm going, and there is freedom in routines. And so many people I've seen do this where they don't, they don't like routines because they don't want to feel restricted. Then they force a routine on themselves and they realize there's a lot of freedom in that routine. And so they force themselves to keep being more routine and they enjoy the routine after a while. So do you have set routines, the morning routines, the evening routines? Consistent daily action creates routines. Routines are what drive your life. What routines do you need? So if you're lazy or you're unmotivated, if you have a vision, if, if you don't have a vision of where you're going, you're not gonna get there. But if you have a vision, if you have a schedule, if you have intention, a plan of action and set routines, it's gonna make your life a lot easier to get there, right? Would you be more motivated every single day when you wake up, if you had a vision, a beautiful vision of all of the happiness and the joy and the love and the success and the money and the travel and the, the adventure that you could have? Would you be more motivated if you could see that in your future? If you had that vision? Would you be more motivated if you had a schedule of exactly what you needed to do every day to accomplish that? Would you be more motivated if you had an intention of how you wanted to show up, how you wanted to be, how you wanted to treat people, how you wanted to be as yourself, and in, in how you want to impact the world? Would you be more motivated if you had a plan of exactly how to get there? And would you be more motivated if you had set routines that would get you step by step by step closer to where you want to go? Would you be more motivated and be less lazy? Yes, of course. So. I have an assignment for you. Grab a journal right now and answer these questions. You can pause me if you need to. If you're watching these videos, there's a pause button. Pause it. If you're listening to me on the Mindset Mentor podcast, you can pause me. Grab your journal. If you're driving, please don't grab your journal. Do it when you get home. Whatever you got to do. Here's my questions I have for you. Write them all down and then journal through them. Where do you want to be in 12 months? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Figure those three questions out first. Next, what is my daily schedule to start moving in that direction? Now that I know where I want to be, what is my schedule that I can set up to start myself moving in that direction? Next question, what intentions do I need to set daily? Maybe it's workout intentions. Maybe it's work intentions. Maybe it's character intention of how you want to act, how you want to treat people. What are your intentions that you need to set every single day so you're actually like moving in the direction you want to versus feeling like you're just putting out fires. Okay. Next question. What actions do I need to accomplish today? What actions do I need to accomplish today? And then last question. What routines do I need to create? Here's the beautiful thing about all of this. It's not rocket science. It's freaking simple. People act like success is so hard. Success is not hard. It just requires you to do the simple things every single day. Just show up every single day. It's about creating a plan. It's first off creating a vision, then creating a plan of how to accomplish that vision to get you from where you are right now to where you want to be. Because here's the answer to all of it. We're all going to be somewhere in 10 years. Hopefully we're all alive. We're all going to be somewhere in 10 years. But the actions that you take today will decide where that somewhere is going to be. When you look at discipline, what exactly is discipline? Because what discipline means to me might be different than what it means to you. I guess it could be a little bit, depending on who the person is, you can see discipline as a bad connotation, right? Like if, if a child is bad, you discipline that child. That's a bad connotation for discipline. But for me, 
I don't see it as a bad connotation. I see it as a prerequisite to get the life that I want. Simply put, the way that I see it is being able to take action even when you don't feel like it. That's it. Just take action regardless of how you feel. That's it. There's, there's nothing else to it. It's feeling the resistance of your mind, of your body, of your life, of your external circumstances, internal circumstances, whatever it is. It's feeling that resistance of, I don't want to do this, but then leaning into it and doing it anyways, doing it regardless of how you feel. You know, it's the, it's, it's following what the mind tells it to do versus the body. Cause sometimes the body's like, well, I'm exhausted. You know, the mind knows what you need to do to get stuff done, but there's a disconnect somewhere in there. There's a disconnect of the body doesn't want to do it, or you're thinking the wrong thoughts. So it's about connecting to what needs to be done and doing it versus knowing what needs to be done, sitting on the couch, hanging out, looking on Instagram, and then feeling like crap about yourself because you didn't do anything. So let's go through the seven tips right now. So number one, this is super important one that I tell a lot of people that I've coached over the years is if you're unmotivated, if you're not taking action, if you're not disciplined, you need to start focusing on the opportunity and not the obligation. So what does that mean? You need to stop looking at the obligation that's in front of you and you start looking at the opportunity. So a good example would be, let's say that you want to make $100,000 a year for your first time in sales. And the reason why you want to make $100,000 for the year is because you want to buy your family a home so that your children can have a backyard and be in a good part of town and get a great education and get out of the neighborhood that you're in. That's a beautiful thing to be able to think of that. That's the opportunity. The obligation is that you've got to sit down and make 50 cold calls today, maybe. So instead of looking at the obligation of, damn it, I've got to sit down. I've got to make 50 phone calls. I don't want to make 50 phone calls. You look at it and go, when I make these 50 phone calls, it'll get me one step closer to my children having a safe environment that they can grow up in with a better education. If you think about that, the opportunity and not the obligation, the 50 phone calls, don't you think that you'd be more motivated to make those 50 phone calls? So if you're not disciplined to take the action that you need to, to create the life that you need to, it's probably because you're focusing on the obligation that's in front of you versus the opportunity that you get. For me, I'll be honest with you. I've said this many times. When I sit down to plan episodes for this podcast, it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. I love shooting the podcast. I love recording them. I love all the other aspects of it. But to sit down and plan is really not my jam. I'm not really keen on it. But I have to force myself to do it. You know, you're not going to love every single part of everything that you do. But I have to remind myself as to why I'm doing this, right? If I remind myself that there's hundreds of thousands of people that listen to the podcast, that there's going to be people whose lives are going to change and remind myself as to why I'm doing this. Maybe there's someone out there that's really depressed. And if they listen to this episode, it's going to turn their life around, or at least they're going to feel better. If I can make somebody feel better, that makes it worth it. Now I'm looking at that, which is the opportunity versus the obligation of, I got to sit down and plan. Great. Beautiful. So remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing is the biggest key behind it. That is the opportunity. Why are you doing it? What are you doing it for? What is the life that you can create? How would your life change? How would other people's lives change? Find and focus on the opportunity and stop focusing on the obligations. So that's number one. Number two is to start mastering the small things. Figure out a way to get really good at the small things. If you've been a listener of my podcast for some time, you know I'm a really big believer in the small things, in, in just doing the small things right. Because success in life are not about some big, massive, cataclysmic event that make you successful or change your life completely most of the time. It's usually a bunch of little teeny tiny boring things that you do every single day. Success is usually not sexy. It's just a bunch of little teeny tiny tasks done every single day to make sure that you get it done. The best athletes in the world, they're not the ones that have, you know, if you look at the, the, the best basketball players, they're not the one with like the best crossovers or the best anything. What it is, is they're the people who, who master the fundamentals of being a basketball player. If you look at a, a football player, if you look at a, a wide receiver, they've mastered the routes that they're running. They've mastered stopping on a dime and turning to the right. They've mastered every single aspect of it. If you look at a wide receiver, they'll go through and they'll shoot, or they'll catch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of balls every single day. It's not even about all the other things. It's about how can I know that I am a, a football player? I'm, I catch these balls if I'm a wide receiver. I need to get make sure that it's so built into my programming into my hands and the muscles in my hands that no matter what happens, my hands are going to catch the balls they fly at it. It's about mastering the fundamentals and everything that you do. Success is doing the small things day in, day out, whether you want to or not. So what are the small things 
you know, if you think about that, what are the small things required for you to get what you want in life? Let's figure it out. That's number two, master the small things. Number three is to design your environment. I'll give you a great example. If you're trying to lose weight, have you designed your environment to help you lose weight? For me, I'll give you a great example. My body loves sugar. Everybody around me knows that if I have sugar, I'm gonna wanna finish, if I have a piece of candy, I'm gonna wanna finish the entire bag. I'll give you a perfect example last night. We were driving to go to dinner last night. I was in Dean's car and he's got kids. So he had on the right hand side, I was in the passenger seat. I reached down and he had some, some of those Welch's fruit chews, whatever those are. I had one of them because I was like, I haven't had one of these since I was a kid. I ended up having like 30 of those damn things. I can't have one because my brain's like, we gotta go. I'm gonna eat the entire bag, I know that. So I don't buy Skittles, I don't buy candy. If you come into my house, my environment is built around not allowing myself to eat candy because I know I'll finish the entire bag. So what do you do that you need to design your environment for? My environment is designed to make sure that I don't finish an entire bag of candy because I know I'm gonna have a whole bunch of energy, it's gonna drop and then I'm gonna feel like crap for a few hours. So what do you need to do? You need to design your environment. What can you do? Do you waste too much time on the couch? Maybe you spend too much time on the couch. Take all of the cushions off your couch and throw them inside of your closet. You're not gonna be hanging out on your couch if there's no cushions, right? You can, what are you gonna do? Lay on the floor? Probably not. So then you try to go in, you're like, well, this doesn't look comfortable. I might as well go, go do what needs to be done. Do you waste too much time on social media? How can you design your environment? Put the phone in another room and don't allow yourself to use it for an hour. Do you have a roommate? Do you have a spouse? Do you have someone that you live with? Give them your phone and say, hey, don't give, you're not allowed to give me this phone for two hours. Even if I come and ask for it, say it's an emergency, don't let me get it. That's designing your environment. Andrew Huberman, who is the neurobiologist I had uh, about a month ago on the podcast, says he knows that he's addicted to his phone. So sometimes he's literally taken his phone and thrown it on top of the roof because you have to literally go and get a, a ladder you got to get on top of the roof. That's ridiculous. So before you go and do all that stuff, he's like, oh, I know I threw it on the roof for a reason. I'm going to get done when I need to. Let's give you another example. Do you want to wake up and go for a run? Put your running shoes next to your sink. So when you sleep, you just wake up, you brush your teeth, you put on your running shoes and hell, go to sleep with your running clothes on so that you're literally ready to go. How can you design your environment to support the life that you're trying to create? Think about that. What do you need to do to design your environment to make it better? Do you want to meditate? What do you need to do to design your environment to meditate, to make meditation easier? Do you want to floss your teeth? What do you need to do to design your environment to floss your teeth? Design your environment to support you taking action towards whatever it is that you're trying to do in life. So that's number three. Tip number four to make sure that you have more discipline is to make your body move. This one you've heard me talk about if you've heard other episodes, your body will respond to whatever you make it do. Your body is the most incredible piece of machinery. Your brain, your body, all of that stuff is just so incredible. So what do you need to do to make your body move so that it starts creating the chemicals that it needs to? If, I'll give you a perfect example for me. I almost never want to work out. There's really most of the time I never want to work out. I'm like, damn it, I got so much other stuff I could do. I've got a business, I've got employees, I've got so many other things. In reality, I'm just making up excuses as to why I shouldn't work out. So then I have to force myself to work out. So before working out, I never feel like I want to work out. I'm never like, yay, today's leg day. Never, I don't know if I've ever said those words in my entire life. But then when I get done with the workout, my body has woken up, my body has responded. It has changed its chemical compounds inside of it. It's switched around from laziness to moving to motivated. And it's a lot easier to keep going at the end of a workout, simply because my body has all of the chemicals in it to keep going. And a lot of times by the end of a workout, I'm like, why don't I just do a couple more sets? And I feel amazing after. What happened? I forced my body to create action. And in that action, chemicals change in my body, chemicals change in my brain, and gave me more drive to keep going. Action creates more action. Inaction creates more inaction. So if you're not doing what needs to be done, you need to break the cycle of inaction. What do you need to do? Well. Tip number five will help you. Tip number five is to count down and go. Don't allow yourself to think. Mel Robbins wrote a book on this called The Five Second Rule. And for me, it's funny that, that she wrote a book on this. I literally have been doing this for a really long time, but I used to count down from three. I would go three, two, one, and I would force myself to do whatever that thing was. When I was younger, I was really shy. And I knew that if I wanted to start making more friends and wanted to get some girlfriends when I was younger, I would have to figure out a way to start talking to people, right? And so what I would do is when I would start to think of what I needed to say, I would get really nervous. And I would think of the first word that I needed to say, and I would go three, two, one, 
and then I would say the word. And I would force myself to say the word because forcing myself to say the word, it'd be really awkward if I just said the word and didn't say anything after. And forcing myself to say the word would then, at that point, I had to finish the sentence. It would force me to finish my sentence, whatever it is I was talking about. And I still do it. If I have a tough conversation with my girlfriend or a tough conversation with my employee, I still do it. Three, two, one, and then I say it. And I think this is ingrained in a lot of us as kids, where when we're in trouble and our parents want us to do something, they're like, you better go, you know, put your shoes away. And you're like, I don't want to do it. And they're like, three, two, and you're like, oh, shit, I don't know what happens at one. I got to go and run. Hopefully you didn't say, oh, shit, as a kid, but you know what I'm saying. But you're like, I, I don't know what happens when she gets to one or when she gets to zero. I might as well go run and do it. So I think it's kind of built into our brains. Like, I'm afraid to find out what happens at zero. So with that being built into us, it doesn't allow us to sit around and think. I've never heard someone just think their problems away. Well, I'm just gonna think them away and they're gonna disappear. It's usually some sort of action that's required to get you past it. The best thing to do is to count down. Three, two, one. And then just force your body to get up and move in some sort of way. That's tip number five. Tip number six, this is a good one. This is something I used to do with all of my clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients when I was coaching people for years. Ask yourself this question. How can I make this easier on myself? Whenever I would have my clients set goals, I realized that a lot of times they would set a goal and then they would mentally make it harder on themselves by starting to tell themselves all of the struggles, all of the things that were coming up. And I was like, well, instead of finding, your, finding all the reasons why not and why it's gonna be hard, why don't you just find the reasons why it's gonna be easy? And in fact, why don't you just make it easier on yourself? So when you figure out what it is that you need to do, to get life done and to get the disciplines you need to, ask yourself, how can I make this easier? Because life, success, happiness, joy, peace, all of those things, they're not difficult. We make them difficult. Why not find the easy route? Like we think that we have to struggle our way to success, that life has to be so hard. It doesn't have to be so hard. You can make everything in your life easier. And if you can make it easier, if it doesn't feel as hard, guess what you're more likely to do? You're more likely to take action. So ask yourself the question, how can I make this easier? And then tip number seven, get an accountability partner. Get an accountability partner that is on the same path, that's also working at something in their lives and talk every single day. Even if it's just through text message, say, hey, my goal is this. You know, if your goal, if we go back to the 50 phone calls to get you $100,000 for the year, my goal is 50 phone calls every day, Monday through Friday. I need you to check in on me every single day. Can you do that for me? And then every single day, this person checks in on you. Get an accountability partner. You hold them accountable to their goals. They hold you accountable to your goals. And with this accountability partner, if you really want to make it fun, if you don't hit your goal or you don't check in, there needs to be some sort of reprimanding or there needs to be something that you lose in some sort of way. So one thing that I've really found that motivates people, there's a lot of people that are politically charged nowadays or they believe very deeply in something. And so what I always say to people, you know, we have very advanced people that work with us and we literally say, and we did this inside of our Kaizen Mastermind, which is in our mastermind of, you know, advanced mastermind that we have for an entire year with entrepreneurs and leaders and, and managers and sales leaders and all that, is we match them up with an accountability partner. And I said, one of the things that I recommend is that you guys figure out something that they need to do if they don't hit their goal. And that something could be, and the example that I gave that everyone seemed to react to is donate a thousand dollars to the political campaign that you hate the most, right? So if I believe in X, whatever that is, and there's Y that's out there that is the exact opposite of it. If I don't hit my goal, if I don't do what I say I'm going to, if I'm, I don't do that thing I'm supposed to do, I actually have to donate a thousand dollars to Y's campaign. That motivates a lot of people. To donate to somebody that you don't like is a big motivation. Could be anything, could be something else. It could be that you have to give your accountability partner a thousand dollars, give him a hundred bucks, even 200 bucks, even 50 bucks. I don't know what it is, whatever it is that's motivating for you. Where your accountability partner will then be motivated to keep you even more accountable. If they know if you don't hit your goal and they don't hear from you, they get 50 bucks. Do you think they're gonna be checking in on you more often? Of course. So how can you bring in an accountability partner? You hold them accountable, they hold you accountable, and the goal is for you guys to up-level each other's lives by checking in on each other and making sure that you get it done. Because ultimately, a lot of times, you're not disciplined just because there's nobody checking in on you, just because there's no uh, nothing that you have to do if you don't hit that goal. So get an accountability partner is tip number seven. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. It was on like Donkey Kong, comes out of the womb and they're like, oh, I get stuff done. Being this badass productivity machine. If you don't feel like you're disciplined right now, you're not starting behind the eight ball.